Yeah, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, as a product manager at Syntica, it's my honor to uh, just to kind of describe a bit about this system here, the Prodigy. Um, it may be new to some of you, some others may have heard of it. It's been around for a little while, um, but as Syntica is now carrying this product, uh, we thought it would be good to just provide a brief overview of what this product is and to just introduce it to the market. So today we'll be talking uh, about a few topics. It'll be, most of them will be pretty brief. So some of this will be probably uh, well known to many of you in the field who have been studying in this field for potentially decades. Um, but I'll be quickly going through the introduction and history of the uh, open platform research ultrasound sound as a general field, a bit about S Sharp itself. And then uh, we'll review the Prodigy, which is the actual product in question, as well as look at a few um, key areas where um, they really feel they are, uh, there are some advantages and there are some advantages in the Prodigy and how it can stand out uh, compared to what else may be out there. And then we'll just cover a few applications and a, a few papers that have been um, published recently using this system and how it can really help them provide that research. And finally, of course, there will be time for some Q&A. So to start, uh, just talking a bit about Open Platform Research Ultrasound. Um, it really goes back a little bit to um, uh, quite a few decades ago as miniaturization of clinical scanners and a widespread use of proprietary or closed systems um, began to be kind of widespread. And this, in a sense, also hindered novel ultrasound research as um, research groups could no longer easily access or, or could not easily access the raw data being generated. Um, they were also not potentially not able to um, change the transmit waveforms and adjust the pulses, the sequences of what's being transmitted in order to investigate novel um, imaging. So since then, uh, there have been quite a few attempts at um, improving the situation and providing products for researchers to use. And this includes uh, add-on modules to clinical scanners. Uh, for example, uh, their ultrasonics came out with the sonic stack that attached to their clinical scanner. And then, of course, several research and commercial systems have since been developed that are a bit more specific to the field. Um, and initially, some were quite large and bulky, for example, the Sarah system. Um, but now, uh, of, as we all are probably aware, there are several that are of transportable size. And uh, that's where we are also introducing the Prodigy. So the Prodigy fits right into this, where it's a, it is a commercial system ready to use, um, very compact and transportable, as we'll see in a moment. But because of this research, it's, it's a bit more established now. We, we kind of know what to expect from any product in this field. And some key features include that we want customization of the transmit waveform, of course, ideally on a per channel basis. We want access to pre beam formed received data, um, as well as beam, beam formed as well if possible. We want uh, real time imaging, Tick tech, uh, typically quite a few channels, so anywhere from 128 to uh, 256, and in some cases even more than this. Uh, we want it to be portable, a small form factor, and very importantly, we would like a software backend for the data processing because this really provides the flexibility to be able to provide your own algorithms, to run your own processing, and just this is where it allows a lot of groups to do their custom research. And um, in many cases, this is also, of course, accelerated uh, with graphics cards as it's a very good in-between between using a, a CPU or a dedicated FGPA or um, hardware processing. So having uh, covered that, just briefly in about S Sharp itself, um, it's, S Sharp is a smaller company, so and uh, with much of their market currently in Asia, uh, so it may not be known to everyone just yet. Um, but they've actually been around uh, for quite a few years. So they were founded in 2011, but that was after nine years of actual technology development. So they've actually they've been developing and working on the system for well over a decade, almost two decades now. And their vision really is to create customer value through innovation. And they do this by providing cutting edge ultrasound solutions. Uh, so they have a couple of products, of which we'll be talking about one. And they are able to do this by rapidly leveraging uh, technological advancements in electronics and software design and putting these into biomedical ultrasound solutions. And so all their products are fully software-based, um, allowing for easy upgrade capabilities as uh, technology improves further and new algorithms and new processing becomes available. And uh, they're also open platforms in that both their systems 
allow uh, streamlined workflow by allowing real-time raw data access. So these are the two main systems that S Sharp uh, provides. Uh, the Prospect T1 would be the pretty much the first tablet-based tabletop ultrasound system uh, for preclinical imaging. This is primarily used for mice and rats. Uh, it's also portable and very portable actually. And we we demo this system carrying it around in a in a check luggage a Pelican case. Uh, but it's also open in that uh, it, it does provide pre access to the pre beam formed raw data. And uh, once again, all the salt processing is done in software. And that allows uh, updates to be done quite easily. However, what we'll really be looking at today is the Prodigy, of course. And uh, this there's a few components that kind of are used together with the Prodigy. And this includes, of course, the Prodigy itself, uh, which can have either 128 or 256 simultaneous transmit receive channels. Um, and this comes with an embedded PC. There is a HIFU unit with up to 256 channels. There are high power transmit modules, one for more pulsed applications and one for continuous wave applications. And of course they have their own probes. And uh, of course, very importantly, they can provide probe adapters to ensure that whichever probes you may already have in your lab or may already be using would be able to be used with the system as well. So a quick review now of the Prodigy. Uh, these are the one the module I, I mentioned earlier. So you, what you don't really see here is they're very compact. So for example, the size of the Prodigy unit itself, you're looking at the small, one of the smallest basically computers you can think of. So if you have like a, a cube shaped computer, this is about as big as it is. And this not only incorporates the Prodigy itself, but also incorporates a very a powerful workstation computer inside with graphics cards. And then you have the unit with, for HIFU, and then the two high power transmit modules, and they all link together and can be controlled together as well. I do note that the HIFU unit is a pulsar and uh, not arbitrary wave transmit. So it's a compact ultrasound platform as a measure of either 128 or 256 transmit receive channels. However, by multiplexing, uh, up to 512 channels can be used in the standard configuration. And actually up to uh, 1,024 channels can be multiplexed together um, for a custom build. Incorporated, as I mentioned previously, is a powerful embedded Windows PC. Uh, this includes a graphics card, and video graphics card for CUDA or OpenCL, whichever one you're using. And because they're embedded together, this ensures a very rapid up to 10 gigabytes per second data transfer between the receive electronics and the PC itself. There's real-time data acquisition and processing uh, with access to raw or beamform data. And uh, of key import, there, it uses a true arbitrary transmit waveform um, and has 4,096 levels. And this is because it uses a, a DAC with linear amplifier setup. Uh, rather than just a three-step or five-step. And finally, it includes an intuitive graphical pulse sequence user interface, which allows users to rapidly change pulse sequences, use pulse sequences. Uh, they don't need to be familiar with a programming interface to use these. However, if they wanted to, uh, this system does support C Sharp, MATLAB, and Python programming environments uh, in order to control it and to create the pulse sequences and uh, all of those. And a bit more about this, uh, I mentioned about multiplexing up to 512 channels, and this is through three Canon DLM connectors. So these are just your very typical zero insertion force connectors. Uh, and you can, as I mentioned before, adapter boards are available uh, with any user supplied pinout and adapter board can be created to ensure compatibility. The transmit frequency of the system is anywhere from one kilohertz to 30 megahertz. And uh, custom options do allow this to go as low as 24 hertz as needed. The time delay accuracy is 2.8 nanoseconds. And the max amplitude is 170 volts peak to peak. Uh, the arbitrary waveform generation uh, does have a sampling rate that goes up to 180 megahertz. And of course, it uses PCIe uh, Gen 3 to transfer up to 10 gigabytes per second. Uh, and finally, it, the receive side electronics has a sampling rate of up to 125 megahertz at 16 bits. 
So to, uh, the Prodigy does support a number of basic ready-to-use modes, um, but you'd expect from typically any uh, ultrasound system. Uh, here, they are all included um, as turnkey solutions, and you do not need to pay extra for any modes. Um, anything that's available is available. So you have your standard B mode, M mode, pulse wave, color, power Doppler. Um, you can do multi-focus or multi-beam and duplex and triplex imaging as well. And in addition to these, there's also the capability for pulse sequence modes as I mentioned before. You can do synthetic aperture focusing, trapezoidal or steerable scanning, uh, spatial compounding, coded excitation or harmonic imaging. These are just some of the fully optimized modes that can be used uh, out of the box. The add-ons that I mentioned, the HIFU unit, uh, can be used either by its itself with any PC that you provide, or it can also be incorporated with the Prodigy uh, and using that software interface and to um, synchronize them all together. A similar transmit frequency, anywhere from one kilohertz to 30 megahertz, uh, 2.8 delay, time delay accuracy. It is a bipolar pulse generation, and it provides up to nine watts per channel. Uh, and this can go higher than that if you're using a pulse application, depending on your parameters. And then the high power transmit modules, there are two of these, and it really depends on your application. They can be used for shear wave elasticity imaging, um, acoustic tweezers, HIFU, and depending on which module you're looking at, it can provide up to 50 megahertz uh, pulse transmit frequency at 200 millijoules per pulse, or 15 megahertz uh, in a continuous waveform of up to 162 watts of power. And these are the, the standard options that are provided that um, a customer can purchase with the system. And these would work right out of the box, connect right into the, with a matching pinout. And there are two linear array options, a phased array, a convex, and an endocavity. And this, you can see the specs here, they range anywhere from 64 to 128 elements, um, with frequencies ranging from 2.5 megahertz all the way up to 18 megahertz. And uh, as the maximum transmit frequency for the system is 30 megahertz, uh, if you had your own transducer or probe, which many of you probably would, um, as long as you provide the pinout, an adapter board can be made for that and it would all work seamlessly together. So now I just want to highlight uh, a few of the unique features or um, I, maybe not totally unique, but features that would be good to emphasize here. And these are the first, the pulse sequence mode, as I mentioned, and uh, this is rare in the field that it's, you're able to pr provide and really design the pulse sequences that you want completely in the graphical user face if you want to. And this can be very useful if you're designing something and you want to make a quick change just to test. You can re really do that quite easily in this case. The design of these, of the pulse sequence mode is an event-based design. So you can design it so that there are individual events. And then these events can be grouped together into an event group. And finally, those can again be grouped together to form frames. And this would be really useful for certain applications. Um, for example, if you wanted to do photoacoustic imaging, um, where you wanted to have uh, an ultrasound and photoacoustics, and then you want to repeat these at every single point in a scan, for example, uh, it would be quite useful to have this. And again, this can also be done uh, in programming. It does not have to use the graphic interface. The next feature that I'd like to uh, note is the true arbitrary transmit waveform. And in this case, every single transmit and receive channel can be individually, independently switched on or off for each event. Uh, now to be accurate, the transmit side can be switched on and off. You can choose which channels to transmit from. On the receive side, every channel is always receiving. However, you can choose which channel to use for processing or in which to discard. And it wouldn't affect any speed wise or anything. So these arbitrary waveforms can be designed, loaded, and assigned to any channel. And every single channel is independent. So uh, I'm going to just kind of demonstrate here with a few examples. So what we did is we, the, an oscilloscope was connected to the transmit waveform directly. So I was teed out um, during an experiment. And what we can see here is the transmit waveforms for different channels. So in this case, this is a very basic situation. You can see. Um, all the channels for every event have the same waveform. And this can just be noted. Um, this is if someone's using MATLAB to program it in. However, you can get much more complex than that. So in this case, uh, for each event, there are different waveforms. 
but the same waveform is used across all channels. So for example, at time point one, every channel is emitting the same waveform channel, which you can see here in yellow. At time point two, a different waveform is provided. But across all the channels, they're using the same one. And in this case, you can actually change it so that every single channel has a different waveform. Um, however, in all events, they're using the same one. And then you can combine them together and really make it as complex as you want. So uh, you can specify a different waveform for each independent channel for each independent event and really make it as long as you want, as complex as you want to test whatever uh, algorithm or whatever application you're using this for. So this is where there's just um, a lot of flexibility with the system. And in addition, you'll see that the waveforms are very clean. Um, and this is really due to the DAC with linear amplifier setup that they are using here. Now, before we go any further, uh, we're just going to take a moment for an audience poll, and I'm just going to hand the time back to Gabrielle for the moment. Thanks, Lawrence. Uh, as Lawrence mentioned, we would like to ask a couple of quick poll questions, and the questions are the following. The first one being, do you currently use commercial or academic research ultrasound systems, with the options being Verisonics Vantage, S-Sharp Prodigy, ULA OP, Ultrasonics, Sonics Touch, Stephasonics, Opinion, Visual Sonics Vivo F2, in house solution, other, and finally, the last option being no, I do not. The second question is what applications do you or would you use it for? With the first option being general imaging, that includes B mode, M mode, Doppler. Uh, the second one being pulse sequence development, IFU and or HIFU monitoring, non destructive testing, photoacoustic imaging, other. And finally, none of the above. And the last question, will you be attending ISTU 2023 or IEEE IUS 2023? Uh, we'll just wait a couple of moments for everyone to answer the poll questions. And after that, we will continue with the webinar. Just a few moments more and we'll continue. Thank you, Gabrielle. Yes, uh, you're welcome. Um, yeah, we'll now hand over the presentation back to you, Lawrence. So I've basically covered uh, most of the topics of the discussion today. Uh, just the last one, we're just, we'll just go through a few uh, papers. Um, some of these are proceeding, some of these are published papers. I'm uh, just showing examples of the images um, that were able to be achieved thanks to the Prodigy. Uh, to, and just a few applications that the Prodigy can be used for. And of course, it's not exhaustive. It's really, honestly, a lot of it's really up to your imagination what you can think of to, to explore. But ultrafast Doppler is an example, uh, shear wave elastography, uh, HIFU, uh, using it to develop new ultrasound pulse sequences, uh, non-destructive testing, uh, photoacoustic imaging, uh, or to develop new reconstruction algorithms. Now note that uh, I'll be presenting a few cases with example images. I won't be going too in depth into each paper. However, references are available at the bottom of the slide where applicable, and I would welcome the, uh, you to check them out. So this one here would be a case of using ultrafast Doppler imaging in a rat brain. So this study was looking at a MCAO rat model of stroke to compare the performance of ultrafast Doppler compared to um, a more traditional MRI technique. And they used a synthetic aperture B mode with ultrafast Doppler um, with their own in-house post-processing algorithms. And they're able to see these images here. So there's a standard synthetic aperture B mode image in A. Then you have ultrafast power Doppler in B, uh, a fusion image of a two in C, and ultrafast color Doppler in D. And this is compared to the MRI images in ENF where uh, it's typically used to look at the lesions in stroke. You can see how it really does line up quite well and you can see the differences here. And so uh, just as context, this was used, uh, this, they did this using an 18 megahertz uh, linear array transducer. And the MRI would be using a T2 weighted and a susceptibility weighted imaging. So in, the, in this case, really, uh, it was the project was used to acquire all the images um, and to do ultrafast Doppler, which is um, 
of course, uh, you, you do need a system that's able to do that and acquire at very high frame rates. And for an example, this is from the same group, uh, but again, it's an example of ultrafast Doppler in the rat brain, um, a different paper. And here they're using a transducer at 16.4 megahertz, um, but with an imaging rate up to 5,000 frames per second. And uh, the processing algorithms in these cases are uh, done by this group themselves um, using, I, I believe it's an SVD method. But um, it's, it's quite fantastic, the uh, image quality of what they're able to achieve. These are some in-house images by S Sharp. Uh, in this case, it's a rabbit kidney and testes um, using a normal New Zealand white rabbit and an eight megahertz linear translucer. Um, and you have on the left here, the kidney, on the right, the testes. And you can see just the, uh, the Doppler images and how clear they are. And finally, one last example here would be a mouse kidney, again, uh, in-house uh, with a bulb C mouse. Um, and this one using an 18 megahertz linear array transducer. Another application would be a shear wave elastography. So this is an example by S Sharp where you can see um, they're using a single push, uh, multi-push and dual beam pushes here. And you can see, uh, you can basically monitor the wave as it's propagating through the phantom. Uh, here we have a different application. Uh, it's we're again using ultrafast or plane wave imaging. Uh, in this case, up to a thousand hertz, uh, using a five megahertz probe and a twenty hertz, a twenty megahertz sampling frequency. And they're here. They have the probe located against a forearm, and they're comparing normal and patients with Parkinson's uh, to see if they can study the strain in the muscle um, by tracking the speckle movement frame by frame. And they did analyze the images offline here, but they, they were already accelerating them using a GPU unit. Um, and that's basically laying the groundwork for potentially, you could use a system like the Prodigy to run uh, real-time strain measurements using the built-in graphics card. And then here in the image, you can see the a strain as it's increasing over five seconds as the participant is grasping this uh, object. Then there's also a HIFU, of course, and monitoring HIFU simultaneously, which can be done with the system. And in this case, it's just a bit of a setup with the Prodigy connected to the Have Heart Transmit module. You can, of course, also connect this to the HIFU unit if you're using an array for HIFU instead of a single element. And then you have the probe and with a phantom and monitoring it. And this is where it would be also, you could design your own pulse sequences and to really do um, both high view and monitoring at the same time. And some example images of what you can see uh, is uh, with a phantom before high view and then what's going on during it. And at five minutes and 10 minutes, you can monitor the difference that the phantom is uh, taking up here. Uh, one other um, application that's actually quite widely used with the Prodigy uh, is something called photoacoustic imaging. Many of you would be familiar with this. Um, it's in the molecular imaging world, it's really been uh, growing a lot very rapidly. Uh, and this is an example of one group that used the Prodigy for the system like this, where uh, you would basically provide your own laser, uh, typically a Q-switched NDAG laser, but uh, not always. And then you would illuminate an object and you could detect the waves coming back using the Prodigy as basically as a uh, data acquisition system or a digital, uh, analog to digital converter. And the interesting thing here and why this is so useful too is this really allows uh, someone to quite easily um, create a hybrid ultrasound and photoacoustic system uh, because the Prodigy system is also capable of, um, of transmit, of course, and of doing ultrasound imaging. Whereas if you were to use just a typical off the shelf um, data acquisition system, you would generally be limited to just receive only. And on top of that, due to the way that the project can multiplex multiple uh, connectors, you could actually use different probes for ultrasound and for photoacoustics. And this is actually ideal because with the broadband frequencies in photoacoustic imaging, you typically don't want to be using a ultrasound imaging probe for photoacoustics anyway. So this is where it'd be, you could connect multiple probes to the Prodigy, do hybrid ultrasound and photoacoustic imaging, do all the reconstruction, potentially up to real time using the graphics card built in and then uh, have it all in one system like this. Uh, and the Prodigy has actually also been implemented as an OEM component in a commercial photoacoustic system on the market already. This one actually I found very fascinating. It's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting as it's ultrasound, but it's also photoacoustics indirectly uh, where they're 
using photoacoustics effect to generate an, a signal at the end of a wire in this case, and that signal then gets propagated into the phantom and generates, uh, and it leaks into the uh, material there, and it can be imaged with the ultrasound scanner. So again, it's a it's a setup where the Prodigy is basically incorporated in a photoacoustic imaging setup, but separate um, and, and indirectly measuring uh, the photoacoustic waves and providing ultrasound here. And in this case, we can see in these images, uh, the B mode images on the top and the leaky acoustic wave images on the bottom and how uh, you can overlay them and see the difference there. So that pretty much concludes the uh, product overview today. Uh, I hope you found that helpful and um, that made you aware of a new product that you might find useful in the future for any research that you might be doing. Uh, we will now be opening the time up for some questions and I'll actually be handing the time off to Tanya. Perfect. Thanks, Lawrence, for that uh, great presentation. I encourage anyone who has questions to uh, put them in the Q&A dialog box. We'll work our way through those that are there, but please feel free if you have questions to, to enter them there. Perfect. So the first question is, uh, and they apologize if they missed uh, you stating this in the presentation, uh, but what is the sampling rate um, for the transmit DAC using the, uh, used to generate its waveforms? Uh, so actually, I, I only mentioned this briefly. The sampling rate on the transmit waveform, sorry, on the DAC, can go as high as 180 megahertz. So this does uh, vary. The system itself automatically calculates an optimal sampling rate for based on the center frequency of the probe that you're using. So it's not always stuck on 180 megahertz. Uh, and then as you're imaging in real time, it will be displayed on the screen, uh, specifically which one is chosen. Great. Um, another question here, is there a limit on the length, for example, number of samples of arbitrary transmit waveforms? Uh, I'm not aware of any length on the arbitrary transmit waveforms. Uh, this would be something that we, I would have to double check with the, with S sharp. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, they've, they've tested it on quite a few applications. Um, and it's it basically you run as long as you want. Uh, to my knowledge. Okay. Um, another question here, are the transmit frequencies limited to spe specific defined frequencies? Uh, no, uh, actually this is uh, one area, um, the Prodigy can actually basically choose any frequency between uh, one kilohertz as a standard module up to 30 megahertz and you're not limited to uh, what's there. Uh, so you're not limited to specific presets. Perfect. Uh, and one final question before we end the web webinar. How long can the duration of the pulse be with the high power transmit module? Uh, I'm unfortunately, I'm not able to answer that question. Okay. Um, I do know that on the Prodigy itself, um, they've tested like the PRF up to like 30 kilohertz, I believe. Okay. Um, but this, I would have to double check with the manufacturer. Okay, we can get back to the, that person who asked the question for sure. Excellent. So at this point, we're at the 30 minute mark. I'll pass things over to uh, Gabrielle for finishing up. But again, if there's extra questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A dialog box. We will get back to you with the answers and create a transcript for everyone to see. Thanks so much again. Thank you, Lawrence and Tanya. So as Tanya mentioned, we've reached the end of our session today. And to be respectful of everyone's time, we're going to wrap things up. As mentioned at the start of our webinar, we will be sure to answer any questions in the written transcript and we'll get to this, this out to you over the next few days. And I would like to thank Lawrence for the great presentation and Tanya for assisting us on the Q&A section. I trust that we have been able to provide you with a better understanding of the Prodigy Open Platform Research Ultrasound System. And if the in the coming days and weeks you have more questions about the modalities discussed today, I encourage you to contact us here at Syntica and we'll be more than happy to discuss them further. Thanks again to all of you for taking the time out of your day to attend our session, and we look forward to seeing you at a future Syntic event. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone.